Ms. Rush, you want to extend the current amendment? Uh, first of all, we, from the very... Oh, okay, from the very outset, we said that this uh, mission, this coalition mission of the United Nations in Syria is very instrumental in uh, supporting the mission by Special Envoy uh, Mr. Kofi. And it is really an uh, unbiased instrument of monitoring the situation and uh, monitoring the compliance of the sites of the Syrian conflict uh, into the, the provisions of the UN Security Council resolutions and the ceasefire possibilities and uh, the truce at large. So uh, we don't hide from everybody that this is our uh, strict and uh, principal position that the uh, mission in Syria should go on with its uh, activities. And we are ready in the Security Council to uh, get the roadmap in other 45 days or even uh, 30 days as agreed in the Security Council setting. Uh, uh, moreover, uh, the political stance of uh, the Russian Federation is uh, once again confirmed by the President of the Russian Federation, who made uh, a special decree available to the press that Russia is ready to uh, dispatch another 30 servicemen to this mission. Uh, if extended, and if, uh, if it is possible to prolong the activities. So this is all the facts confirming our position in favor of continuing the UN mission. They are uh, ears and eyes of international community. And what do you hope extending the mandate will achieve in Syria? Uh, first of all, of course, um, it can be modified in terms of the prevailing situation in Syria in terms of more focus on the political aspects of, of uh, the monitoring mission. Um, I think the um, Security Council resolution adopted um, some time ago uh, to fire this mission uh, or to, to, to launch this mission in Syria said that um, it is capable of uh, promoting truce and uh, reconciliation in Syria. So both sides are um, obliged to, to do uh, their utmost uh, to stop violence, to proceed for uh, uh, inter-Syrian inter dialogue uh, for promoting peace and reconciliation. So this is the this is the, the task which is given by the international community. It should be implemented in full. Uh, the mission, once again, is very instrumental in all these aspects. So we're in favor, very much in favor of uh, prolonging the activities of the mission in Syria. We will do our best to, to find the compromise on certain formulations in the forthcoming Security Council decision, I hope. So would you back the British resolution that extends it for 30 days? I think the British uh, resolution is uh, somewhat uh, a bit absurd and awkward. Uh, the permanent representative of Russia, Mr. Chukin, explained yesterday in air uh, what the confusion is. So the two parts of the uh, British draft um, are incompatible with each other. It's not, it's not uh, compatible with the procedures of the uh, United Nations Security Council um, sort of resolutions as they stand uh, because um, this is a discrepancy between the two parts. First, to uh, finally prolong it for 30 days and then <clears throat> another formulation goes with the saying that uh, the Security Council will consider further uh, the possible pro prolongation of the draft. So I, th I think we'll try and we are ready to find any compromise formulations to, uh, to, to get green light for this uh, prolongation. It's very, it's very updated and needed. I'm sorry, I'm just hearing from uh, your envoy in Paris saying that Bashar al-Assad is ready to go in a civilized manner. 
I don't comment on that because it's a breaking news of Al Jazeera. We'll try to find out the uh, real details of that. If President Assad or his wife or it's his family for Russia. Asked, asked Russia to no. come here, would you take him? Uh, no. In order we, to facilitate perhaps a peaceful transition? In, in no, I think, I think the position is very clear. We, we never discussed that and we'll never do that because it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a matter of, uh, of uh, internal affairs. And uh, the destiny of Mr. Assad should be decided by the Syrians themselves through the dialogue. And that's our principal position. Is there any concern that the current situation on the ground, which is very fast moving, the opposition has taken border posts, there's very serious fighting in Damascus. Is there any concern that the situation on the ground is actually overtaking diplomatic efforts? No, I think in my comment today at the briefing, I said it very clearly that everybody in the Security Council and around it, all the international players uh, should, uh, should uh, work very responsibly to implement all the decisions taken by the UN Security Council and the Geneva Communique. So what's going on, it's, uh, it's a backward movement for some of the players, and they um, uh, proclaimed it very openly uh, what they try to attain in Syria. Uh, that is not a, um, that does not correspond with the Russian mind. That's why we vetoed the, such kind of a resolution. We should all concentrate on implementing the decisions taken by the UN Security Council and the group of action in Geneva. So that's the only platform for promoting political settlement. So what do you want to happen in New York today? You vetoed yesterday's resolution. You don't like the British resolution. You withdrew your resolution. So currently there doesn't seem to be much on the table. Uh, no, I think uh, the point is that uh, we would like to work very constructively on the basis of the decision taken. And if it goes in the wrong direction, we say beforehand that if you, the British partners, the American partners and other parts, will go on with your draft, um, we will not be ready to. We said it very openly and um, it shouldn't have taken place like this. That's a very fair position. Uh, we need to find uh, um, mutually acceptable language to uh, prolong this mission notwithstanding with some political formulations once again to get round and beaten round the bush and taking all these provisions which were not and still are not acceptable for the Russian vision and the China. With, with all respect, is it... And, and, excuse me, some, in addition, uh, you put it so, so much emphasis on veto right and this is a particular part of international law and the provision of veto was introduced, as you know, by the United States as a, as a very important instrument for uh, five members, permanent members. For, for So every decision should be balanced, should meet the requests and interests of all international community, and first and foremost the five who are mostly responsible for maintaining peace and security in the world. So in the British resolution, they would have to drop any provisions after the 30 days. You just want a, a, a straight-out, flat extension of the current UN mandate. I think it's up to our very skilled negotiators. And uh, uh, in New York, they will find uh, proper formulations to satisfy it and to calm down a bit situation. Because if we don't extend the mission, that will affect very much the situation on the ground, which we don't feel uh, proper and necessary, particularly at this stage of settlement. With respect, is your position even realistic given the, the situation on the ground? Should fighters get close to the presidential palace or threaten to topple? They've already obviously a very serious bombing in Syria this week that, that killed uh, quite a few se senior members of, of Assad's uh, inner circle. Should the fighting get more serious in Damascus, why would the opposition even want to lay down arms? Doesn't that make your position a little bit more difficult, which is what you're asking? 
you want, you're hoping the UN resolution will make both sides lay down their arms. I think we declared very clearly that all Syrian sides should follow the decisions taken by the Security but Council. But they haven't been, sir. And, and that's the whole deal. They one haven't, side, haven't been at all. one side, and influenced by some international players. If they stop this policy and influence properly on the Syrian opposition, that would follow some positive consequences to stop fighting. They don't. And uh, of course we, we are not on the side of the government, which is using, of course, armaments and so on. But in most cases, it is a retaliation effort rather than a, a, an offensive attack. So, and I, I don't want to follow your uh, characteristics of uh, the situation on the ground because our correspondents report that despite all the difficulties of the situation, uh, the whole spectrum of activities, military activities in the capital are not so large. Uh, so uh, we should uh, be more cautious about, about the, uh, the data given from the, from the ground, from different forces. And what are your concerns sources. if the opposition were to get a real foothold? Uh, we tried to persuade the opposition. We received uh, several delegations, including the uh, elected chairman of the uh, Syrian um, council, Mr. Seder, here uh, quite uh, last week. and. Um, they told us that this is a revolution and shouldn't be stopped. If it is so, uh, the UN and the international community is not, is not a, an instrument for settlement. So it's another story. But uh, to some extent, these statements do not reflect the opposition uh, as a stance of a Syrian opposition at large, because they don't represent all. And the point is that they should, they should stop fighting, they should stop violence and uh, reflect mostly on, uh, on uh, electing the negotiation team for starting the dialogue. That's, that's the point. That's the whole philosophy of, of our position and uh, position of Mr. Anand. But we did see hundreds of people come out on the street yesterday, uh, sorry, the day before yesterday. What would you say to those Syrians who feel that you're not backing them? Uh, Russia has continuously said they're, they're, they want the will of the Syrian people to determine what's happening, but there are Syrians who do back the opposition. Of course, but uh, a, large no, a, a large number of population uh, back the government. So this is once again a clear point for both sides to stop this deadly fighting and get uh, to the negotiation mode as soon as possible. That's the th that should be the thrust that we all expected from the United uh, Nations Security Council to decide on once again to back very vividly the announced plan. Okay, Mr. Lucas, thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.